My name is Mary and I'm here to bring the kids lesson at Timberlake Christian Church on March 28th. We are right in the middle of a series of stories that we have been talking about leading up to Easter or Resurrection Sunday. And each week we've had an egg experiment that has helped us to remember the different parts of the story. The first week we sucked an egg up into a jar and that reminded us that Jesus was drawn to us in our sin and he rescued us. And people were drawn to worship and praise him when they thought he was gonna rescue them from the Romans. And we can be drawn to him with thankful hearts to say thank you for loving us and for forgiving us. Last week, we um, did an experiment to see if we could tell from the outside if an egg was raw or boiled because we don't have laser eyes to see through the um, shell to see what's inside. And that reminds us of the part of the story where Jesus had one of his 12 disciples who from the outside looked like all the other disciples, but inside his heart was not fully devoted to God. He loved money. And so that love for money eventually led him to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And even though from the outside he looked the same as all the other disciples, Jesus knew his heart and what was inside and he loved him anyway. Today, we're gonna to try a new experiment called the egg drop. So watch as we um, try this here. So for this experiment, you're gonna need a glass with some water in it, and then you're gonna need a shallow pan that is centered on top of the glass, an empty toilet tube that is in the middle of the pan, and then you're gonna put your egg on top. And what's gonna happen is I'm going to hit the pan from the side and the pan's going to go one way and the egg's going to drop. Are you ready? Three, two, one. And the egg ends up in the, in the glass of water and it's not broken because the water caught it and held it safe. In today's story, Peter fell hard, but Jesus caught him and rescued him and kept him from breaking and gave him a second chance. We all make mistakes. And so that we are so grateful that God gives us second chances. Let's check in with Hazel and Raquel down at the chicken coop. Oh, Hazel. I just got some good news. What's that, Raquel? The farmer says my new eggs were good eggs. He's going to let me live for another year. Oh, I am so glad. I am too, I think. I'm still nervous whenever the farmer looks at me. I can't decide if he's thinking about them in omelet or con kernel 11 uh, herbs and spices. Come on, Raquel. Look up the bright side. He gave you a second chance. This is a season of second chances. It is. Sure it is. Just ask Peter. Um, Jesus' friend Peter. Who's Peter? He was one of Jesus' best friends. Not just one of the twelve disciples, but one of the three closest to Jesus. One night, Jesus was portrayed by Judas. Jesus predicted that Peter would disown him three times before the rooster crowed. Which rooster? You mean our rooster? No, no, not Jerry. Some rooster in Jerusalem about 200, 2,000 years ago. Please tell me Peter did not mess, didn't mess up. Tell me he heard Jesus this morning and didn't do the right thing. I'm afraid not. Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, just as Jesus predicted. He felt absolutely horrible. As well as, well as he should. But the good news is, Jesus forgave him. He did? That's why Jesus came, Raquel. He knows people are sinful and they've broken God's commands, but if they believe in Jesus, they can be forgiven. Well, sincerely? Oh, that's so wonderful. God is always giving his kids second chances, just like the farmer gave you a second chance to lay a good egg. If Jesus can give Peter a second chance, he can give everyone a second chance no matter how bad they mess up.
Okay, confession time. Have you ever broken an egg? Unfortunately, last week after Sunday morning church and I was taking the eggs from the experiment back to my office, I accidentally dropped one on the carpet and I had to go and clean it up. Have you ever broken an egg? Maybe you thought it was a hard boiled egg and so you whacked it on the counter to start peeling it and then it was a raw egg. Or you got an egg out of the refrigerator to make cookies with or something and on the way back to your bowl you accidentally dropped it on the floor and you have to clean it up. Eggs are fragile. That's why when we go to the grocery store we kind of open the carton and make sure all 12 eggs are still whole before we take them home. I am so clumsy. I have even gotten a whole dozen eggs home from the grocery store only to drop the bag with the eggs when I get into my kitchen and break all 12 of them. Eggs are fragile. We're fragile too. Not our outsides like eggs, but our insides, where we get hurt, where we mess up, where we do what's wrong. And last week we talked about um, Judas, the bad egg, the one whose heart wasn't completely devoted to God. And from the outside he looked good, but on the inside there were still some things that were messed up. He was making mistakes, and I make mistakes, and you make mistakes. Judas was so brokenhearted over his mistakes that he didn't even give chance, Jesus a chance to forgive him. He thought his life was over. And yet, just like in our experiment, when the, egg, when the egg hit the water, the water cradled it and kept it from breaking. Jesus does the same thing for us. He knows we're fragile. He knows we'll break. He knows we'll make mistakes. But he catches us and he cradles us and he gives us a second chance. Jesus forgives us. We were talking last week, you know, do you think Jesus would forgive Judas for the wrong thing that he did in betraying him? And I think he would because he is in the business of forgiving and giving us a second chance. Before, um, it, uh, okay, I'm going to start that paragraph over. Right. In fact, God is in the business of second chances. From the very beginning, remember our story? God created man and woman and put them in a beautiful garden and he walked and he talked with them. Amazing, I can't even imagine. And yet, even with all those good things, he gave man and woman the ability to choose him and obeying him or doing what they wanted. And eventually they chose to do what they wanted and they sinned. And because of that sin, that relationship was broken. But from that moment, God came up with or hatched a rescue plan. And in that rescue plan, Jesus, God himself, would come and live on earth and pay the penalty that we deserve for our sin so that we can have new life. So we're going to look at someone else that was one of Jesus' disciples who messed up just as much as Judas, and yet God gave him a second chance. So turn your Bibles to Matthew. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. It's the first one of the Gospels. The Gospels are the book that tells us about um, what Jesus' life was like when he lived here on earth. And you're going to turn towards the back of Matthew to chapter 26. So look in your Bibles from Matthew chapter 26, and then find verse 31. In Matthew 26, 31, I'm going to read 31 to 35, and then a little bit later I'm going to read 69 to 75. So follow along with your fingers as I read from the New Living Translation. Verses 31 to 35. On the way, Jesus told them, Tonight, all of you will desert me. For the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I've been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. But Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. 
This is the conversation that Peter and Jesus are having right after they've celebrated the Passover meal together and they're walking to the Mount of Olives. Jesus is going to ask his disciples to pray with them and they're going to fall asleep. And, and then eventually Judas is going to come with the soldiers and have Jesus arrested. And when the soldiers come, Peter does try to defend Jesus with a sword, ends up cutting off someone's ear and Jesus has to heal that person. And Peter follows the soldiers as they take Jesus to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where Jesus is tried and questioned. And here are the next verses that we're going to read, verses 69 to 75. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, You are one of those with Jesus of Galilee. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know who you're talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little while later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. And Peter swore, A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. And suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. And he went away, weeping bitterly. How sad Peter must have been when that rooster crowed and he realized what he had just done. Jesus had been right. Peter had seen all of Jesus' miracles. He would listened to Jesus' teaching. He'd even told other people about Jesus. And yet, he got scared. He didn't want to be killed with Jesus. And in his fear, he said, oh, I, he's, I'm not with him. I, no, I don't know him. And I can't imagine how difficult it would have been to realize what you've just done and that Jesus had been right and you had betrayed Jesus just like Judas. But this story doesn't end there because it's a story of second chances. And Jesus gave Peter a second chance and Jesus will give us a second chance. Watch this YouTube video of this portion of the Easter story. The Miracle of Mercy, Peter. This is Peter. Hey, oh! Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey! Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus and he heard all of his teachings. When the time came for Jesus to die and take away the sins of all the world, Jesus had one final meal with his friends. During this meal, Jesus told his followers that the time had come for him to leave them. Huh? Peter asked, where are you going? Jesus told him Peter couldn't follow him now. What? But that he would follow him later. What are you talking about? But Peter said, why can't I come now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus said, die for me. Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. Then Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives so Jesus could pray. Along the way, Jesus told his followers that they would all abandon him. Uh -oh. But Peter said, even if everyone else leaves you, I never will. Jesus said, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. But Peter wouldn't believe it and vowed that he would stay with Jesus until the very end. The other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, I feel. Later on that night, Jesus was arrested by men sent by the religious teachers and priests. Peter tried to fight for Jesus and he cut off the ear of one of the guards. Ah! 
now. But Jesus healed the guard huh? and went quietly with the captors. All the disciples scattered just as Jesus told them they would. The men led Jesus away to the house of the high priest. Peter and another disciple followed them. Peter came to warm himself by their fire. Uh, hello. <laughs> A servant girl noticed him in the firelight. Huh? Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. Oh, ma. But Peter denied it for the first time. He said, I don't even know him. <sighs> After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. Oh. Peter for a second time said, no, I'm not. Uh, okay. <sighs> About an hour later, a man who knew the man whose ear Peter cut off said, Didn't I see you in the olive grove with Jesus? This must be one of them. He comes from the same place as all of them. Yeah, you're right. But Peter said, No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. And then Peter heard the crow of the rooster. <laughs> Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Jesus' words flashed through his mind, and Peter left the courtyard weeping. Then Jesus died and was placed in a tomb. The disciples heard that he had come back from the dead. Peter even saw the empty tomb and believed that Jesus was alive again. And Jesus appeared to the disciples to show him that he was alive. Some of Jesus' followers were together when Peter said, I am going fishing. Okay. So they all went out to the sea, but caught nothing all night. At dawn, they saw a man standing on the beach. Oh, hey, over here. The man called out to them and said, Have you caught any fish? Nope. The man said, Throw out your net on the right side and you'll get some. Uh, okay. So they did, and they couldn't bring in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then one of the men on the boat said to Peter, It's Jesus! When Peter heard that it was Jesus, he swam to the shore while the others pulled in the load to the boat. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Mmm, -hmm, I miss a fish. Got it! Jesus said, Come have some breakfast. While they were eating, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Peter said, Yes, you know I love you. So Jesus said, Then feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked again, Do you love me? Peter said again, Yes, you know I love you. And Jesus said, Then take care of my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time, so he said, You know everything. You know that I love you. So Jesus said one last time, Then feed my sheep. And so Peter went on to feed Jesus' sheep by helping establish the church and by writing books that we can now read in the Bible. And though he denied Jesus, he was forgiven, and many came to know the love and forgiveness of Jesus through Peter. I love this story. I love that John reminds us that even after Jesus came back to life, Jesus didn't leave Peter hanging, swimming in his guilt, afraid that he would never be able to hold his head up and, and talk about Jesus again. And instead, Jesus goes to him and has that conversation and says, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, you know I do. And then Jesus gives him a job. Peter ended up being a leader in the church, telling people um, all over about God's great love for us and how Jesus came and lived and died and came back to life so that we could be forgiven for our sin. I love that, that we don't just see the failure, but we see how Jesus forgives and gives us a second chance. You probably expected the egg to break in our experiment earlier this morning because it fell from a distance and yet it just was cradled there 
in the egg. We know what happens when eggs fall. <laughs> they get smushed. There's no more French toast or omelets. There's just a mushed egg on the floor, all shells and, and white and yellow. It just gets wiped up and put in the trash. God knows that we are just like those eggs. We can break. And instead of allowing us to crash and burn, he rescues us. And he says, I've got a plan. I've got this. I love the many examples in scripture that show us God's love for us and show us that he wants to be with us. And he is willing to do the hard work of taking care of the punishment that we have earned with the sins that we commit. The selfishness, the lying, the independence, the stealing, whatever it is that we struggle with. God sees that and he forgives us and he gives us a second chance. See if you can remember our story today with these uh, multiple choice review questions. Maybe this week you've fallen or failed just like Peter. You've had every intention of doing what's right and yet you do what's wrong. Don't give up. Sometimes it's easier to forgive other people than it is to forgive ourselves. We replay that memory in our head over and over and over of us messing up, of the disappointment, of the frustration, uh, of the hurt that goes along with with not loving God and loving other people. Don't be like Judas, be like Peter. Don't let that failure define you. Instead, turn to Jesus and say, I am so sorry, please forgive me. And give Jesus the chance to say, it's okay, I've got you, don't worry, I've forgiven you, let's start again. Because our God is the God of second chances. Our verse from Romans 5.8, one of my very favorites, says this, But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ and God, they knew we would mess up. We did back in the garden, and we're still doing it today. And instead of leaving us <laughs> helpless and hopeless, Jesus came to forgive us to offer us new life and hope in him. So let him forgive you and give you another chance this week. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time.